and boom. Welcome to the first uh, Wakan TV, which is a podcast. And welcome Loper to my house. Ooh. This is where this is where I usually sit. Yeah. So not much has changed. No, what's changed is we've been on a long tour. It's been a surreal time. How are you feeling? We've just been home for like two days. Yeah, I'm I am really tired. So but I I feel good. I feel like we definitely accomplished what we set out to do. I think that there was a lot of challenges that we didn't have control over. Um, and I think my general takeaway uh, was that tour was awesome. Kind of boring, but pretty awesome. <laughs> I mean, it's it's a weird thing because it's, it's the hurry up and wait. Yeah. Where you have long periods of nothing happening and then everything happens at once. It's like the very high highs and the maybe low low sometimes. So basically we're going to be looping back into all these things because uh, this is the very first time we do something like this. God knows if we're any good at it, but a lot of people we're have been asking us to do... going to be terrible at it. Well, you know, I feel it's just about like us being ourselves and presenting to our audience uh a little bit about what we actually do with wakan liquid yeah. stranger all the different components and part of that is also being on tour and um lugging around the country playing music one part of it is that, uh, that you're very involved in is you know the record label being the head a and r and day-to-day -day operations but um just before we got too lost in like the tour and the reasons why we're touring i guess this podcast first episode would be a good starting point to just go off and like what is it that we do and the whys totally you know it's it's interesting because like we've been working together and i was looking back last night at i mean it has been almost 10 years yeah and uh, when we first i met you in tulsa oklahoma and through one of my first management clients in dance music and in kind of thinking back through we've we've kind of done so many different things and i think that this is yet another facet for us to kind of go down the rabbit hole my point is that over the course of these last 10 years, we've kind of made a lot of strides. And one of the biggest things that I can probably take away from it is kind of seeing your development as an artist, but also this um, genuine inquiry to get to know you better. And I think that that's been really kind of eye-opening because it's been yeah, you're an artist and you're a musician and you're a producer, but you're also somebody that um, cultivates, you know, art and kind of creates, uh, has created this label and then has all this offshoot type stuff. And this is another form of that. I think, you know, we've been kind of mulling it around talking about if, this makes sense to do and now here we are in your living room <laughs> and uh you know we are fresh off tour and we got this silly mic in front of us to kind of start just chatting about life and everything pertaining to it you know it's it's one thing you know being on social media <clears throat> and it is a great way to stay in touch with little you know, sound bites of information and the same would go for, you know, a Twitter feed where you have the 140 characters, but this podcast format has advantages that it's a longer format where we could actually get to the bottom of subjects and explain ourselves well, if so needed, we could start disagreeing on something and actually even have the 
opportunity to change our opinion mid conversation, which I think is part of growing as a human. So that's actually a forum that we've been lacking, if you could say that. It's not really what we, you know, personally, I'm an introverted music producer slash, you know, pianist, keyboardist. Like I like isolating myself and making music. And that's how sort of my journey started. And if someone would have told me I would be sitting uh, right now in Oklahoma uh, running a label and that would would have probably seemed uh, insurmountable and also a little bit uh, paradoxical given my you know personal inclination to just be by myself and just been kind of shy and then but if you then see those consecutive steps it's like it's it's like a journey Uh, and I like sort of reminiscing back on those things in my life and seeing the red thread like it's hard it's almost like an impressionist painting sometimes when you stand too close to something and you have to take a few steps back and then it becomes this actual picture right and so i feel like sitting here and doing this is like just a natural extension to a certain part of what we've been building up to because it started for me making music right and then somewhere along along that journey trying to play shows and hum- humbling um uh growth and then meeting you and then i think that's really you know the beginning of me even getting more serious about you know not just like my own output as a musician or you know expressing myself emotionally which i feel music does really well but actually the impact that i could have as quote unquote a leader in a community uh which is what i feel today is the most important thing for me even more than making music to a certain extent yeah well and i and i also think that that's a big part of why this function really when we talked about first doing this why we both were pretty apprehensive about doing that and kind of letting you know the guard down And then saying, you know, as part of this kind of community, uh, sometimes what you feel is mandatory is not always the thing that's the most comfortable or the thing that you kind of want to do. And I think that this, you know, is kind of a a step in into that direction where like this is a pretty uncomfortable situation, but. What do you mean? Like being here doing this podcast? Yeah, like, like, I, like you know, like, like for me at least, I'm, you know, I I'm not very... on stage. I, I don't do that. That I'm always the guy behind the guy, crouching around behind the curtains, behind the email, on the phone. Very much not in the public eye. Um, but I also think that there's a cause and a reason for that to become more. I guess maybe available and to communicate kind of our philosophy with the label and how we run it and what we look for and all the things that that encompasses, because that's at the end of the day, really like, while I'm extremely proud of all of, you know, our successes and the things that we've built, probably the thing that I really enjoy the most is, is being able to, do my very best on a daily level of helping others achieve what they want to do. And I think the label um, is a great outlet for that. And, you know, that's probably like one of my, the most exciting things to me is that we can have this thing that has kind of morphed and grown into this thing that people actually care about when here I am as the person who, when you told me six, seven years ago, I'm going to start a label. I was like, Oh, it's a terrible idea. We should definitely not do that. sounds like a fucking shit ton of work. And it's gonna, you know, the last thing we need is another artist ran label. Uh, but it's only, you know, that, that thought was because, uh, there's a, I think a lack of caring that people, um, have for that. They, they say that they definitely do care about artists, but, that isn't nat- naturally always shown through 
their willingness to share the limelight. And I think that you differ from that quite a bit, which is exactly why I'm super glad to be wrong um, about <laughs> the label in itself. Well, that loops back to sitting here in the first place and you saying, you know, you're used to being in the background, maybe from the uh, spotlights and the stage, but you are in the foreground of a lot of people's lives and making sure that they can be there. But it feels like a natural extension because you're such a vital part to the operation to be sitting here. It's just you and me in my living room and it feels actually very comfortable to me. Uh, <laughs> And I, I, I think the, the takeaway for people listening to this is that it is to people who actually have the heart in the right place, who are trying to improve both themselves and the people around them. And yeah. that's something that I think we should speak more into. And, <clears throat> and uh, I think you have a lot to say about it. Um, going back to the reasons for touring because like what you said like i uh, it, it, it applies to me a lot too i'm like i said an introvert and have this like um oversensitive disposition where i feel everything around me very intensely and so on and so forth so being out touring uh being on the mic being on stage in front of a lot of people it's something i've had to grow grow into um and today is something I do most of the time very comfortably without thinking. But it's, it's, it's a thing about like being present is very important in those things, you know, existing in now and then um, realize, I think I even realized that back in elementary school when you do the school presentations, which first was very dawning to me and then I somehow realized that all the people are just like me and i think like just as i like listening to other people you just speak their mind honestly and dive deep into topics people would feel the same about us talking about our lives yeah like i never seen myself as super weird and even the times when i realized i might have um very niche uh, interests, uh, musical preferences, and so on. Like I've actually always tried to get back to the core and the people, you know. And I think like that sense of community is very important, you know. Yeah. So let, let's actually talk about that because I, you know, I know how everything came to be because I was along for the ride. I think that there's probably a lot of people that don't really know maybe the history of you know martin staff actually martin johan staff let's call it that um so now everybody knows your middle name but um yeah you know tell us about tell us about like you know how wakan came to an existence like what was the thought process let's let's kind of start there and kind of dig in you know, I think it was like uh, uh, two reasons, one very personal reason, which was, and maybe it's good to start there. Uh, you can only give what you have and like it starts from yourself, all these projects. I had uh, a longing for a community. <clears throat> uh, when I started touring, it was with uh, Psytrance. And one thing that really pulled me in in that community was the parties that they were called, but they were really like gatherings of very beautiful people who were extremely generous and kind and working toward the same purpose, which was just being free and dancing and expressing themselves. Such a beautiful thing. And then uh, getting into the dubstep community it came more from a it came from a different culture more like probably urban and uh another dj culture and there wasn't as much of a community hub there were little clicks here and there but um also for myself i used to only play my own music and focus a lot of my own output that was like but circa 
2008, yes. 9, 10, and 11, somewhere in there. And it's very rewarding for me to express myself and create things, but it also made me personally very lonely and a bit crippled. It's only, you're only, you know, uh, people are going to ask themselves what you can do for them. Yeah. And that's something I take a lot of joy in today being able to provide things for other people i think that's just my that's how i'm wired yeah it's like i I enjoy helping other people and i didn't feel like i was doing that so that's like the personal reason and then like i said it was it's kind of like a vacuum same with this podcast there's like a little bit of a vacuum people go on twitter and try to express themselves and either get shut down or it becomes this kind of um i don't know uh, it, it, it's a good thing when we can get together really as people and be able to express ourselves and in what sense, like the big thing then would be infrastructure so when we can all come together as a collective and use the same infrastructure now very good things will start to happen totally because it's bigger than just one person and a lot of people come in with different skill sets like you and me are vastly different people and i think that's what we work really well together both in our uh, you know how we speak how we think i can be very philosophical and rant a little bit and get all dreamy and then you have a very beautiful ability to take that and bring it back into reality yeah very pragmatic in that sense and i i, I love that about you i think like similarly <clears throat> running the label which I sort of started by my desk and um, you were there, but you were also, I mean, like there wasn't that much to do. Yeah, I was I was mainly focused on Liquid Stranger. Yeah. The brand. And rightfully and, so. And, you know, like uh, Wakan, at least, you know, from what I remember, it came from a function of needing to have an outlet that... Um, musically we could push music through and uh, you know because i I remember at the time we were like getting feedback from all these like major labels and all these indies and you know it was like a mixed bag of reviews and it was super depressing in the sense of like some of the people liked certain elements of the song or you know the build up and to the drop and then the drop was too heavy but they liked the pretty part or uh, vice versa, they didn't like the pretty part, but they liked the heavy part, uh, or whatever, you know, they liked certain elements and, you know, it became kind of this annoying thing where it was like, well, how do we kind of remove that barrier of like being controlled by this machine of getting to that place? And that, you know, that's, that was, that was part of like, you know, almost like a, the idea of kind of taking the power back, so to speak. I did, frankly, I didn't think it was going to work. No, absolutely. Um, I can't believe I even forgot to say that, but, and it's almost so easy to forget now when this type of music that we've decided to focus on the time being is so popular, but that's part of the vacuum. The music that we started to do uh, which we tend to call free form bass music because it's really what it is. It could be both pretty and heavy or strange or yeah. any genre, any tempo. That wasn't even around. And it was in the beginning, let's not forget, it was called Weird Bass. Do you remember when we started? Yeah. People called us Weird Bass. I think people still call us Weird. Uh, probably. But, but, but that alternative to the kind of more ingrained, uh, tested and tried forms of dance music, BPMs, you know, house and 124, 128 with a straight kick drum and slight shuffle. You know, it's it has like a recipe and we broke all this recipe. I, I mean, I've been doing that, but it wasn't always, like you said, and it's really easy to, to forget for me now for some reason, but like, it was very hard to get labels interested. So that's yeah. another selfish reason for sure. But again, just like if it happens to me and I happen to know so many people who were making very free form music, beautiful, talented people yeah. who were kind of slept on. And I think that is my personal crusade in all this is to sort of see these 
really talented, maybe more quiet, oftentimes people, or they don't make as much noise, or they don't have as much noise made for them, or they might not be hyped by all these. So they're kind of in an underdog position. And yeah. I have a lot of empathy for that. And I think that um, that's something that really appeals to me when someone is pioneering something, doing something different, something fresh. And I, I, I and I have made that choice somehow too for myself. I know that I, you know, the music that or the journey. I'd say I'd rather be part of bringing something new into the world and pioneering something than to just use an old recipe that might be a faster way to the limelight. You know, that's yeah. not really what making music is about for me to to begin with you know so, and i think but that that whole um attitude of seeing the value in something even though it might not follow the beaten path is something that i think is the reason why it's worked so well because it's very genuine and we really believe in these people and it's not just you know Wakan is also a record label. We put out records. That's one way that we can express ourselves or put our message out in the world world. But it's not the whole thing. You know, it's not yeah. just a record that plops out here and then. It's a it's a whole um myriad of things that comes together to make that work. Well and and I and I think that the festival the festival is also part of that i mean like you know if you would have told me that the label was going to grow into another label and then that was going to grow into us playing these really big rooms and you know us then starting the festival and you know having you know these people being willing to you know give us the opportunity to work with them on the record side or the publishing side or whatever it is I would have been like, you know, in the beginning, I would have laughed. I mean, it just didn't even seem, you know, probable. But now here we are sitting on your couch talking about a new venture. And I, and I think that, you know, this is a great thing because, you know, there's no limitations of us being able to kind of counteract um, what is kind of out there in the world. I think that people need to find a place of hope. I think that people need to continue to grow and expand themselves, including you and I. Um, and, you know, I don't think necessarily social media is the, is the end result of that. I think people want real, healthy, tangible things that they can kind of grasp onto. And I think that, you know, whether you love this or you hate it, I think that it will at least be honest. For sure. And we don't really know what this particular thing is going to grow into the actual podcast. But, you know, people ask me questions all the time. And there it's there was a time where I, I actually had the hours in the day that I could respond to more or less everything. Yeah. And well, it's, why now? Like, why this? Like, why this format? Why? Why this venture of time right now? Like, what's the reasoning behind why you feel as though this is mandatory i don't feel it's mandatory i think it's a fun extension of what we do but i do think it's a very useful portal if you would call it that like and that's the word that we use sometimes it's a kind of a connector where we could use this vehicle to talk about stuff that's happening in our life or what has happened and how we feel about it there's so much uh, things that uh, has gone down in the past few years that uh, for most part, maybe I've been quiet about, but there are definitely things that could be said about, you know, even the state of the world, we, world we uh, are now apparently then coming out of a pandemic, but yeah. how much that has changed just even our worlds and for everyone else too yeah um i think maybe that is what sparked it um going into for example you you know like not being able to do shows very easily or safely yeah for a very long time uh made at least me start thinking about other ways to 
you know, reach my community and be a part in their life, be a beacon of light and hope, which is what I genuinely try to be. Uh, it's humbling because it doesn't always work, but that's a little uh, stick in the wheel with the pandemic, not being able to be out. Yeah, I, I definitely, so. I definitely think that that kind of showcased like how um, it was. This business that we had kind of created was pretty, you know, reliant on yeah. touring, and then kind of saying, "Oh man, we need to figure out a way to kind of maybe diversify." And I think most artists and other labels um, kind of did the same, and I think some of which you know, made the cut and then some of which decided to also kind of hang it up and call it a day. Well, then we went into doing some streams, which felt like a band aid, yeah. you know, and the podcast feels like just another way for us to reach our community. And I'm not even sure how often we will be doing this, but, uh, I just know myself, I enjoy listening to podcasts. I am, I enjoy the feeling of even sometimes just since I live alone and work a lot and sometimes just putting my phone somewhere, people talking and it's also like incredible how much I pick up and learn from yeah. doing so. Also, let's not forget I'm an immigrant. So just hearing people speak English and learning new ways of saying things. That's one thing I think about with myself. I can get to the point eventually, but something I always try being bilingual and still learning English is to uh, just express myself more clearly and almost like a arrowhead more succinctly with yeah. as few words as possible. But since... <laughs> Otherwise, people are going to say a bunch of shit on Twitter. But, but also the <laughs> podcast could be allowed to be the opposite where we can even take off on some rants or whatever it is a little bit what it has to be and i think it will also go back to what's going on in our lives like now for example like sitting here like i don't think this is going to be the best podcast because it's the first and also i feel totally empty in my head coming off of this tour I, I think it's it's like one of those overwhelming things, uh, even like trying to take on touring during a pandemic, which is like, how come we did that in the first place? And that was probably more my fault, but. Well, I would say that it was a good decision. I mean, it's it, that felt also like another band aid. It's like, here we are dealt a shit hand. It's been a pandemic and I have a lot of um, empathy for people getting sick and losing loved ones and all these things that have gone down. But let's not also forget that <clears throat> on top of that, the real damage that it did to our society was us not being able to uh, be together, be social. Humans are social creatures. Yeah. Being able to just give a friend a hug or it, visit it was... your grandparents or, you know, I haven't seen my family. Who live, they all live in Sweden. I haven't seen them for over two years now. Yeah. And now there's a war going on there too on top of it so it's like right. extra but so touring was one of those yes you came up with the idea and it's a little far-fetched but i much rather be out doing something useful yeah and I, I think the key word here is purpose having a purpose than to sitting at home twiddling my fingers and well we did that for Two and a half years. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, to try to at least do something. I mean, we went in knowing full well it wasn't going to be the easiest uh, situation, both in terms of the logistics. Being on a tour bus isn't the most, you know, you're used to pooling people together in a small confined space. One yeah. person gets sick, like, well, what's going to happen? Yeah, and, you know, luckily we had kind of taken a lot of, uh, liberties in making sure that we could kind of control some of those aspects. Like, you know, we had two buses, um, yeah. and you know, that was, I mean, in a very expensive endeavor, but it also made it so that we 
were able to kind of keep you at a distance and being able to being able to keep you kind of almost in a I didn't weird even. like quarantine so you didn't get sick because transparently we didn't really know what was going to happen with the pandemic we didn't know if by going out on tour you were going to be exposed in the moment that you know your headliner goes down the tour is essentially over you start canceling shows and so we tried to be as responsible as possible and live by the guidelines uh, of the CDC and then obviously on the state level as well. Um, and I don't think it was like necessarily always the perfect solution, but, you know, as opposed to doing absolutely nothing, sitting at home for another six months really didn't make much practical sense. Yeah, I mean, and both you and me live in the luxury of having a lot of streams of income and stuff it wasn't so much of that pressure but just i don't know not doing anything isn't that healthy mentally and i feel not being useful just going back to my own reasons that's not it's not a good place for me to be well and i, and and I, I think, think you saw that too with even like you know on the surface level of even just like our crew people that have been with us you know for years on end you know seeing them kind of come back and doing another tour and it being like almost like this i don't want to say completely different person but seeing the the cause and the effect of what the pandemic had done and the actual damage mentally that it had kind of created you you kind of saw that firsthand in your relationships with people that you were super close with and they are you know, I'm not going to say entirely different, but pretty different comparatively to what you maybe remembered. Yeah, absolutely. And even how I used to know myself compared to now is slightly different. You yeah. Know, a little more somber. Yeah. I think we all might have a little bit of PTSD and that it's very good to be honest with oneself and acknowledge that and take a little time to ponder. I mean, in my case, like, you know, I try to hold myself to a higher standard now in my interactions, if I'm going to be honest and not take stuff for granted as much, but just to I, you know, the, the tour I felt, because you're right, the people were slightly different. And maybe, you know, going to myself more rusty, but I do feel that the, the tour was really healthy in that sense, yeah. being out and getting back in the groove and remembering, you know, because it's got two aspects. I spoke about being an introvert and seeing at home, and that is just one aspect that is like the personal going within finding new pathways and maybe growing in certain ways but getting it out it's like part of the completion and part of the journey that makes it worthwhile well, and sharing it, it with people i also think that that's a big part of the reason why you saw people almost in a weird way during the pandemic almost acting out even on social media because it kind of felt like that was like seemingly some sort of only release that they had yeah, to kind of air that grievance and it, it kind of turned it into a very like hostile kind of place um but you know i think you know getting back to that i i think that for the situation of not knowing necessarily what was going to entail on the tour um, and then taking all the precautions that we did to make sure that everybody was as safe as humanly possible, all while still being able to kind of get to a place where we could go back and work again and it not be this one dimensional kind of business. It felt really good to kind of get back to a place of normality, if you will. Well, it was very lonely and weird to have to isolate as much as i personally did on the tour and sure i had this whole luxurious bus and all my own private things but it was very lonely but uh we also had zero covid uh, outbreaks on the tour so that's yep. a win yeah i'm pretty 
stoked about that <laughs> so that makes it sort of worth it i guess in retrospect but let's not forget that it was i mean by far you know the most straining tour somehow and i think it was because of that because yeah the shows i mean like it's easy to get spoiled too and i i think i'm a good example of that but like sometimes it's healthy to use the past as a reference for how far we've come yeah because the shows right now are pretty luxurious and uh you know bigger than ever so. yeah i mean and by by but looking at the data you know these were by far the biggest shows we've done and you know i don't always think that a tour is defined by necessarily how many sellouts or something of that nature that you accrue but more of like you know um uh, how how much better did you do on this last show comparatively to the previous how is your crew feeling who were you able to sort of uh bring up and you know i think that that's something that's really important there's always there's always women on our tour that's like that's a really crucial part of you know what we've kind of grown the label into everybody that works at the label is a woman we have a ton of women producers that we're continuing to push and put on. I love the fact that we do that and we stand for that. Being able to kind of bring some of, you know, these newer acts and this newer generation of bass artists and producers is also a very fulfilling thing uh, to be able to kind of give them an opportunity to showcase what they have happening. And, and I think that, you know, to me, you know, the, the true sign of, you know, success is you're not going to be on your deathbed thinking about how much money you've made. You're going to be thinking about all the relationships and all the experiences that you've had. And, you know, for me, I don't think I've ever even probably told you this, but even when I did play in a band back in the day, one of the ultimate like bucket list type things was to be on a bus tour right and so you know like because i played in dirty punk rock clubs and you know was a terrible musician but like this you know seeing these trailers and semis and and tour buses roll up you're just like in awe you're like holy crap that's crazy how crazy would it be and then you actually get on it and you're like well this looked a lot cooler uh, from the outside looking in and now you're it you're in it and don't get me wrong I, I, I'm super thankful that we've been able to kind of get to that level um, and experience that but then you know hindsight's 2020 and you walk through it and you're just like well being on a tour bus doesn't fucking matter whatsoever it's the people that I share the bus with the experiences the fact that I could wake up and drink cold brew coffee with you in the morning and you're all grumpy and you know <laughs> uh you know, Zane's figuring out what needs to happen and where he's going to get Diet Coke and all this other shit. And, you know, that that's those are the things that you remember. And those are the things that, like, I think I'm incredibly thankful for because this is something that has granted us an opportunity to then take inventory of what we're doing, but then also kind of give back through this function of Wakan. Um, and that that's a really cool experience and you know i know we talk quite a bit on um you know being fulfilled and when's enough enough and stuff like that but like you know like i definitely think that we still have a lot to accomplish there's still a lot of things that i want to accomplish even with this podcast as uncomfortable as it might be but there's still a lot of juice in the tank that we can do things with and put people on and 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 i'm excited about to see uh, what the future is going to come from that. And, you know, I think that this is going to give us a really cool outlet to kind of push things through and kind of identify those things where we couldn't do it on social media because of whatever sort of backlash. Um, but yeah, I think that that's going to be really cool. So that's, uh, I mean, that's a lot, lot to unpack, but starting with the uh, selling out shows is something that is, it's like a, 
uh, two-edged sword in a way because it's an awesome feeling and probably business-wise it's very good but it's also like putting a limit to how many people could come and see your show so like i think that's a very good way to like keep it challenging is to try to keep pushing it and you're very good at that and putting me out of my comfort zone because you know it's just to just go back and play the same you know yeah. it's you know but and we don't and then let's not forget like jumping to like putting on a whole entire show ourselves which we do most of the time now like we we actually plan and and book the whole lineup and it's our responsibility from beginning till end we bring in our own sound lights led walls you know it's yep. it's not really um <clears throat> just showing up with a pair of headphones and some usbs to a stage anymore for for me and i actually do enjoy it a hell of a lot more uh because i feel a lot more useful for the community and to other people and also you know because like the keyword here i guess is legacy yeah and like you said you know you're not going to be on your deathbed like you don't have a car because you like to fuel it you want to go places yeah. so business is the same you're not gonna try to make money if that was our only goal you, you know like I, it would look very very differently but there would also be no passion behind it really similarly because it's just an inanimate thing on its own until you do something with it the only so, the only thing i ever wanted was not to have to work in the mall no but it's an it, work it, a day job it is important to have capital and money in this reality and you can because it's simple you can only give what you have yeah and i want to be able to give a lot and i want to live a comfortable life i i have no cap on how awesome and comfortable my life can get you know i'm not gonna settle let's just run this you know but there there has to be a destination it's not just existing in a vacuum uh doing all these things all these shows to make money it's to keep the machine rolling and make it powerful and stronger and have a more positive impact on people so that's why we got to keep growing and getting out of our comfort zone and when i'm on my deathbed i want to die clean yeah and what, what is what is that what exactly like do you mean by that i mean that i want to you know there is this ancient concept of karma which i look at as cause and effect relationships and you know karma is said to be you know the way of repeating certain teachings until you get them and i think that's how it seems like my life is working so i want to die and clean means that i don't have any karma meaning i don't have any moral lessons or things that i uh, this bag of guilt and shame that i carry to my deathbed and that's where i feel very good about what it is that we do because it, it comes from a very pure place yeah and you know i also think you know that also doesn't mean that we're perfect no i mean like i i'm definitely far from it a, it's a journey and it's a yeah. personal journey and let's not forget it's, it's very humbling i'm also a very clumsy person if you take that level but i i it's it's simple somehow too it's like none of your friends is gonna like like you less because you were clumsy and spilled a glass of water but and maybe destroyed some valuable thing due to that thing as long as you do two things take responsibility and stand accountable responsible meaning like yeah i know i own up to it and accountable i try yeah. to do something to to make it better yeah well and I, and I would even i would you know even in our relationship by no means is it perfect but i do think it's definitely a work in progress as per any relationship should be but you know the times where um something has messed up where there has been issues it's always been able to be solved relatively quickly by taking responsibility and being like yo i straight up forgot 
Yeah. I didn't do that. My bad. I apologize. And then owning it and course correcting it. So, you know, you don't continue to do that. Um, you know, and, and I think that that's how the relationship is. And, and even with the, the releases with, you know, um, you know, our artist managers and our artist, artists uh, that we release. I mean, I had a conversation with one of our artist managers this morning and he was just like, dude, this thing is taking like way too long. And I was like, dude, you're, you're not wrong. Like for sure. I can own that. Taking responsibility and accountability is, is crucial and, and having a great relationship with, you know, your team. And, and I think that, you know, a lot of people always oftentimes try to pass the buck, but, you know, I would much rather look at what we're doing and try to find, what my role in owning that can be as opposed to being like, uh, you know, somebody else's issue. Yeah. Super important. Uh, it makes all the difference, you know, the intent behind something, you know, and I think that's, that's the thing that we got right from the start. And then when you add on things like, yeah, if, if I'm stressed out already, it can seem a little overwhelming, but really you know if the intent is clean you can keep stacking different things such as you know touring but also producing but also trying to run two labels and yeah. and also doing this podcast maybe we will have guests i don't know but one thing is for sure you know normally on stage i have about a three to four second attention span where i can fit in some words in my swedish accent and that's all it's going to get to yeah so um having a more personal um way to to express ourselves and talk to our community i think it's like super helpful yeah um having it pretty open and being able to go wherever we need to i think it's also super important there are a lot of things that we could discuss i mean even this time we went into the pandemic and how it's affected people i think that's that's something where my mind has been a lot but like another time we might go into totally different things yeah you know? yeah we've talked quite a bit about tour um you know and some of those experiences obviously the tour itself was a labor of love and it was fun. It was exciting for what it is at face value. It was also really um, real and it was pretty honest. And, you know, the fact that it wasn't maybe a tour in the traditional sense um, uh, is probably uh a sign of the times uh but i think we got through a lot of good stuff on that um you got anything else you want to touch on on that front it's just like you just got to do something with the life you were given so in my case it's like putting on my touring pants and going playing shows and it might not be comfort that's not even like what it's all about yeah really, you know let me ask you this the right thing is not always the easy thing and that's a good way to maybe close this episode final question yes what food did you eat the most of on tour probably either ramen or those little bows that you get those little bread things okay feels like a good stopping point yeah if you know look maybe we're utter shit at this maybe it was horrible but the fact of the matter is, is i had a great time chatting with you you know if people hopefully pay attention and watch i'm sure they'll chime in with comments questions whatever else have you hey, i think it's like important to just go back to this. like we do this because we want to do this and we have shit to say and i exist in that bubble to a certain degree it's like that's my duty to my community yeah. i'm sure it'll work itself out totally. but yeah we'll see uh, everyone uh, and hopefully you will hear us next time cheers yeah.